Hi everybody, my name is Isabel. I work for the Nooksack Salmon Enhancement Association. And today I'm gonna to walk you through the salmon life cycle and highlight common threats they encounter. Let's begin in the river. Before a salmon can lay their eggs, they first need to dig a nest called a red. To do this, they use their tails to dig a small depression and then they lay anywhere from 2,000 to 5,000 eggs in one go. The eggs are then covered with stones to protect them from the current and from any predators. These eggs begin to grow and will start to look like this. Do you see their eyes? Because that's exactly why scientists call this life stage eyed eggs. Do you think all of these eggs are gonna hatch? Truth is, they won't. They're very fragile and face many threats. Salmon are an important part of the food chain. So maybe some are gonna get eaten by a raccoon or other forest predator. These eggs are also very sensitive to the quality of the water. What if there was a landslide? Erosion like landslides are very common around here, and if too much dirt ends up in the water, it can bury the eggs. We also have to consider human impacts and how we affect salmon throughout their lives. Personally, I love swimming in the Nooksack River, but I have to be careful and keep a watchful eye out for these salmon reds. Otherwise, I could squish or bury some of those eggs. Once the eggs hatch, they look like this. At this point, we call them alvins. Do you see that orange sac stuck to their stomachs? That's actually a yolk sac. These alvins don't have mouths yet, so that yolk sac is providing them with food and they easily absorb it. Do you think all these alvin are gonna survive? Again, no, they won't all make it. Let's go over some more threats they might face. There are still more predators around, our local streams provide habitat for many different fish species, and these larger fish would love to gobble up some of our alvins. Maybe the water is just too hot and they can't handle it. This could be because there aren't enough plants along the river to provide shade. Let's move on to the next stage of life. After they finished absorbing their yolk sac, they look like this. Do you see those spots along their bodies? Those are called par marks or fry marks because it looks like this fish was just tossed onto a grill. Because of these, we now call them fry. Those marks help them camouflage along the stones at the bottom of the river. At this point, the fry are hunting for food. Specifically, they are eating macro invertebrates. Let's break down that word real quick. Macro means the opposite of micro. If you wanted to look at something micro, you would need a microscope to see it. But if something's macro, it means it's big enough that we don't need a microscope to see it. Do you know what vertebrae are? Well, I'll give you a hint. I have vertebrae and so do you. Our spines are made up of small bones called vertebrae. That makes you and me vertebrates. An invertebrate doesn't have a spine. The macro invertebrates these fry are eating are small aquatic insects, things like caddisflies, mayflies, and worms. Do you think all of these fry are gonna survive? They may be a bit bigger, but they won't all make it. At this point, lots of birds are gonna be catching these young fish. Maybe the water is really, really polluted from chemicals coming from nearby businesses. The fish could get sick and die. Maybe a person dumped their garbage in the river and the fry got stuck. At this point in the young salmon's life, it's moving downstream towards the ocean. It wants to go out to sea because the ocean is full of food, but it's not ready yet. Most fish are designed to live in salt water or fresh water, but they can't move between the two. But salmon are very unique. They can actually change their body chemically to become a saltwater fish. To do this, they hang out in the estuary, the place where fresh and salt water meet and begin to transform. During this transformation, they are called smolt and look like this. This process of smultification has made them shinier to camouflage in the ocean and prepared them to survive the salty environment. Do you think all of these smolt are gonna survive? Probably not. This new habitat, this estuary has lots of new threats. Maybe some get eaten by a great blue heron or a harbor seal. Maybe there was an oil spill and they got really sick. But those that do survive move out to sea the ocean provides them with food. 
and the salmon snack on small fish and even squid. They can live out here for about seven years and they get pretty large. At this point, we call them sea run adults. They can travel all the way to Alaska, all the way to Japan even. But seven years is a long time. Do you think all will survive the ocean? Let's see what might happen. There are plenty of new predators out at sea, and maybe they get eaten by an orca whale. Our orca populations are actually declining right now, and some populations are in danger of going extinct. One of the big reasons this is happening is because our local orcas eat almost exclusively salmon, and the salmon populations are fairly low. If we work together to raise the salmon population, we can provide food for our orcas and keep them around as well. But let's go back to our threats. Maybe the ocean is fairly polluted with plastic and our salmon accidentally eat too much. Maybe some got caught in a net. So many people rely on fishing to pay their bills and support their families, and salmon is a major part of the fishing industry. All of a sudden, an alarm goes off in the salmon's head, and it realizes it's time to return home. It's time to lay their own eggs in their home stream. So they swim all the way back and re-enter the estuary they originally left from. Last time the salmon were here, they changed their bodies chemically so they could become a saltwater fish. But they can't do that again. It's a one-time thing. You've never seen a butterfly turn back into a caterpillar, right? Because they don't change, they don't waste any time and go straight upriver. At this point, their bodies are beginning to shut down and they stop eating. But they are still determined to make it home. They do change physically. Males get large hook noses and larger humps on their back, and females and males both turn vibrant colors and get sharp teeth. Do you think they're all gonna make it back? Probably not. New predators hunt them down, creatures like bears and eagles. Maybe climate change has had a negative effect. Our local weather is changing, and maybe we aren't getting as much rain every year as we used to. This means the streams are drier and lower, and maybe the salmon can't make it up. The last threat we have to talk about are dams. Many dams in Washington state provide us with energy and flood control, and some are built with salmon in mind. The engineers add a salmon stepladder to the side so the fish can make it around the dam. But there are dams that didn't put this fish ladder in place, and when those salmon return home, they hit a gigantic wall and they can't get around. Out of the original 3,000 eggs, we expect two salmon to return successfully to spawn. And I know that number seems really low, but remember this is from a single red, a single nest. After those salmon lay their eggs, they'll protect them as long as they can, and then they will die. Remember, they're a saltwater fish out of saltwater. They can't survive in the river on their own. But their bodies do a lot of good. They become compost for the trees and provide nutrients and vitamins. This helps the trees grow big and strong, and in turn, those trees provide shade to keep the water cold, filtration to keep the pollution out, and hold the bank in place to prevent landslides. It's a beautiful cycle. Let's revisit our threats one last time. Salmon are a really important part of the food chain. They actually interact with 137 animal and plant species. And there's nothing we can do about that. But we can do something about the water quality and human impact problems. We can work together to improve our communities, our parks, our streams, and keep our water clean and our salmon alive. And maybe if we all work together, more than two will come back. If you want to learn about things you can do to help salmon, visit our website or watch some of our other educational videos. Thanks for joining me.